Let's uh, return to the £6 billion of public spending cuts that the Chancellor will be detailing next week. Let's uh, discuss this with Ben Page, who's with me now. You may uh, think he's uh, Ben Page from Ipsos Mori, but he's also Ben Page, a Commissioner on the 2020 uh, Public Services Commission, uh, which is looking at the future of uh, public services over the next 10 years. Also in Westminster is Mark Littlewood, who's Director for the Institute for Economic Affairs. Thank you both. Uh, if I can start with you, Patrick. Um, Today's announcement really a statement of intent about what we're going to uh, get on Monday. What, what, what did you make of what, he, uh, what uh, George Osborne had to say in terms of uh, where the axe potentially could fall? Well, it, it, it's, only, it's only a tiny start, this six billion, um, and it's, we, we've got to compare these government spending plans with the alternative plans that would have existed if the Labour government had been re-elected. And on these plans, it'll still be 99p in every pound that would have been spent, will be spent. Now, you can make six billion of savings on the fringes and on the edges. You probably can find sort of efficiency savings that make those sort of cuts. But if George Osborne's rhetoric today was right, that solving the budget deficit crisis is the top priority for, for the government, then he's going to have to go a lot further than this. And it's hard to see how that can be done through efficiency savings alone. There is a certain amount you can do by sourcing cheaper paper clips and saving on stationery and, and that sort of thing. But there's only a certain amount. And in order to get down a deficit of 170 billion, and if we're to believe George Osborne, he thinks the figures could be even worse than this, then really six billion of cuts is a drop in the ocean. It's going to have to go a lot further than that. OK, uh, sorry, it's Mark. I'm terribly sorry. I think I called you by a different name. Uh, but when David Laws talks about the fact that uh, he won't agree to cuts that damage frontline services, I mean, that's impossible, isn't it? Well, it depends what you count as a frontline service. The problem with this sort of political rhetoric is that you would believe that backline services have been piling up endlessly, that, that there's been huge amounts of people employed doing completely useless jobs. Now, there might be some truth in that. But I think that it's difficult to see how you can make uh, the sort of cuts I'd like to see made. I mean, going into sort of £100 billion worth of cuts to start to get the economy back in balance. It's hard to see how you can make those sort of cuts and savings without anybody noticing. I mean, clearly people will notice. So what sort of things are the government spending money on now that we are happy to see the government not spend money on in the future? And that's going to mean some pretty tough decisions and some pretty tough choices and I think it would be wrong to suggest that those sort of cuts can be made without any pain. There will clearly be substantial losers in, in whatever decisions are made on those sort of spending cuts but it is a necessity to get the economy back into balance. The alternative is pretty unthinkable. I mean to some degree is being played out in the streets of Athens and I don't think we'd like to see those scenes over here. So I'm glad that the Chancellor and David Laws have made it plain that this is a top priority. I'm glad they're starting but six billion is a pretty small baby step when we need to be taking great leaps. Now, perhaps we'll see a few more of those when the emergency budget comes out next month. But it's going to be a difficult time. It is going to hurt. It is going to be painful. There's no two ways about it. Okay. But the public sector cannot be supported at these sort of levels. The private sector has suffered a lot from the recession. And we've got to make sure that the deficit is balanced not by yet more tax hikes, but by actual reductions in government spending, which has frankly spiralled out of control. OK, I mean, Mark Littlewood, Ben Page, uh, says uh, a drop in the ocean, but this is going to be more than salami slicing, isn't it? Well, I think that's, it is going to be that. And I think what we're arguing at the Public Services Trust is that given the scale of the deficit um, and given the, the, also the demographic changes that we're seeing as a society, as we become, we've got many more older people, just in the next seven years, there are another two and a half million people over 65 as, eight, you know, as we become a slightly older society. All of that adds cost at a time of a perfect storm in terms of the, the finances. And so I think what we're saying is we actually need a fundamental debate. If we look beyond the immediate crisis, crisis to what sort of public services we want. We have to ask ourselves some deeper questions. What do we want? Uh, how much tax are we actually prepared to pay? Um, not much more by the sound of things uh, for many people. And secondly, um, what do we actually want from public services? Because we can't have it both ways and we can't sustain this deficit. What, what about this decision announced by David Laws to review all the contracts that have been signed and all the things that have been signed off by the Labour since the January the 1st? I mean, is that 
Is that legally, contractually allowed? Well, I think they'll, they'll go through it with a fine tooth comb. There will be things, for example, where they've chosen a bidder, but they haven't signed finally on the dotted line, things that they're looking for anything where they can save money. And so, yes, they can do that. There will be some where they'll work out the cancellation fees are worth the, the money they'll save. Um, so, absolutely, they are having a very hard look at spending. They can do that. All right, uh, Ben Page, we must leave it there. Thank you very much for coming in. Also, Mark Littlewood, the Director of the Institute for Economic Affairs. Thank you both very much.